Here's how to use the software to model the evolution of holobionts with both vertical and horizontal transmission. Go ahead and open Wolfram Player, collapse the banner, open a CDF file, navigate to the folder where they're stored, bring up the vertical one to begin with. A window opens with three sections. On the left are a set of sliders to adjust parameters in the model. In the middle is a window with graphs and in general is where the output is displayed. And on the right there is a set of brackets and the bracket right here, the innermost bracket, turns a solid color when there's a computation going on. Now the output can occur in three styles. One style is simply numerical. A second style consists of graphs that are histograms. And a third style consists of little pictures that depict with colors the average number of microbes per host. Turning now to the numerical output, the program displays the results most quickly. The top line here sets the number of time steps. If I increase the number of time steps, you see that the table is growing longer. Each row represents the number of holobionts with a given number of microbes in them at a certain time. The top row is the initial condition. The next row is what the holobionts looks like after one generation and two generations, all the way on down to the bottom where there are 19 generations. The very last row happens to summarize the data for the table. And you can set the value for a slider more accurately if you click on that little box there, and then you can actually key it in. Now the carrying capacity sets the number of columns. If there's a lower carrying capacity, say 12, then there are a total of 13 columns. Let's move the graphical output. And here we can also vary the size of the graph by clicking on it and then dragging it and we can get a larger picture in this way. And you see it's still computing because the right hand bracket is still solid, it just stopped. Now is that the top panel on the left is showing the number of holobionts increasing through time. And you see that this is the log of the number of hosts and the log becomes a straight line indicating exponential growth. The microbe number also becomes a straight line after initially declining. And this graph indicates the holobiont fitness as a function of the number of microbes in it. So for a parasite, the highest fitness is with zero microbes, and the lowest fitness is with the number of microbes in the carrying capacity. So this is the initial condition, which is flat. And one of the things you see right away is that over time, the distribution of microbiome sizes across holobionts approaches a stationary distribution. This is the distribution at which the mixing balances the selection against holobionts with parasites in them. Now we can switch to the mutualist case by inverting these two sliders right here. We can bring the holobiont fitness at zero with zero microbes down to zero and the holobiont fitness with k microbes up to two. We get this graph which shows that now the holobiont fitness is an increasing function of the number of microbes in it. And again, through time, the holobiont distribution approaches a stationary distribution. Only in this case, the holobionts evolve to have large microbial populations, whereas in the parasite situation, the holobionts evolve to have low parasite populations. This is a particularly nice case to illustrate with the picture chart because you see here that the holobionts start out with a moderate number of microbes per host, and through time, the hosts evolve to have more and more microbes in each one, so that the average color, if you will, of the holobionts increases through time. You can imagine looking at corals, and the coral color is increasing through time as the quantity of zooxanthellae in the coral increases. So that's how the program basically works. With this program, you can explore the impact on holobiont evolution of all of the different parameters. Now the same procedure is used for the model for horizontal transmission. So let's close out of this one and open the other. So again, in the parasitic case, we find that through evolution, the distribution of holobionts shifts towards the left, indicating that holobionts have fewer parasites than they did at the beginning. And we can look at mutualistic case, and we see now that the holobionts evolved to have larger populations of mutualists than they did initially.